Two months ago, I decided to start making a game, and this game is a combination of all of my favorites. I'll get into what those are in just a second, but if you hang on until the end, I'm going to go into how I built this game, how it's been so quickly put together, what those games are, and I really want to get your ideas for the game. If you've got some ideas for characters or other things that I'm going to be asking about and showing in detail in a moment, and you submit those down in the comments, then I'm going to grab the best of those, or as many of them as possible, maybe all of them, implement them into the game and then put them into the next video about it. So hang on for that, but let me get into what the games are that I'm combining. The first one is League of Legends. Now I played League when it first came out. I'm pretty terrible at it, but I do like it and I always wished that I could build my own champions. So the core mechanic or one of the core mechanics in the game is that you can build your own champion by combining different characters or I think right now in the code they're called souls and I'm kind of going around with what they're going to be, but it's essentially a combination of different characters and some of these may look pretty familiar they're actually characters from the asset store from different asset developers that i know and love and like using their stuff so we've got all of these characters in here and you see that it gives them different stats and different abilities each one's got a stat ability and then these map over to your q w e r and even t y because there's really right now there are four here but there's no reason that it can't be six or one in fact the code allows that i just go to change a single setting and then the number here changes. So I can pick one role if I want to play a multiplayer game where people just go mushroom versus mushroom and that's it, you can't change, that's cool. Or I can go with a thing where you can go up to as many as six or however many I really want to map out hotkeys for. That's kind of up in the air. If you got thoughts on it, let me know. Now I said this was a combination of my favorite games, so let's get on to the next one, which was Team Fight Tactics. You can see here if I pick maybe these insects, they actually have a set of stats that are just insect related. So the more of them that I pick, the more powerful some of their abilities get. This one heals for 10 plus 2 points per insect that you have. The formatting on my tooltips is still terrible, but hopefully you get the idea. I want to try to grab some of those mechanics where you tie things together based on the different aspects. So they're going going to be tank related ones there will be ones that use things like ammo like this little not stormtrooper looking dude and all kinds of other stuff that ties together different combinations so you have reasons to try different different kind of mixes and matches and right now you can see there's only like 15 or so characters shown and another 15 blocked out they're going to be hundreds when it's done so if i can get tons of ideas from all of you submitting them feel free to start submitting them now then i'm going to be able to build this up by the way if you submit characters for idea or ideas for characters and you have an asset in mind a specific character that you see on the asset store um, just put the name of the asset in there and then the name of the character in there along with it so that way i know what you're thinking and same with particles if you got something that you think would look good because it's way easier for me to just go grab those it takes about three minutes to put a character in and another two minutes to set up the animations to have them all up and running so i can put in a lot of your characters and a lot of them really fast just make sure that you put those down in the comments with as much detail as you got you can even put in stats and come up with stat ideas if you've got some the third game I'm taking some inspiration from is Clash Royale and a Warcraft Rumble. I like the idea of being able to control the different spawns of your units and send them out. So all of the characters that are in the game are also things that you can just spawn and send out. And I'm trying to figure out exactly how that works. Should it be on a timer? Should it just cost money? Should you control that independently? If you got again thoughts on that, let me know in the comments. I'm kind of up in the air. Also, right now you can select multiple and your characters that spawn at those spawners will actually switch between them do the different moves and you can even take control of them just by shift clicking on them all of this is in the demo version right now that you can kind of play around with all of my students have access to it and i'll give access to um, a couple other people if you want a code drop a comment down below in like the first five or so i'll, I'll just give a code out too as well go try it on steam super early access not super fun yet but it's getting there now the last mechanic I'm mixing in is from dungeon defenders or some tower defense type games and allowing the players to build up different towers to defend themselves. So thinking you can build up a magic tower, a cannonball tower, an archer tower and have those just defend the areas that you're away from right now and then they can get destroyed and you can go build them up and buy them again. Making the money that you go try to grab from treasure chests and all that stuff an important resource. Oh, one last thing I forgot to mention. It's also got items of course because 
It's a MOBA style game. You can get items, you can buy them in the shop, get them off of NPCs, creeps, and everything else, or give them to the creeps so that they'll use those items. And then when they die, they'll drop the item and whoever's closest to it can go pick that item up. Should be an interesting kind of fun mechanic thing. So if you got ideas for items, drop those down as well. Now, if you're wondering how I built it so fast, it's a combination of different things. One is I've got a good amount of multiplayer game dev experience, you even teach multiplayer game development courses. So I kind of know the fundamentals and I've got that stuff down. Two though, is that I utilize and use a lot of tools and assets to speed things up. All of the characters that I use are from the asset store. I've got a lot of infinity PBR characters, you see, or magic pig games now. You see, that's why I've got things like this jelly cube, the plant mo plant monster guy, the mushroom, and my favorite is, again, the mimic that you can literally drop down, pretend that you're a treasure chest, and then counterattack people when they come up and try to loot you. I think it's going to be hilarious. But I've also got things like this uh, dude with the laser swords and the guy with the blaster and some really cool proto factor creatures that are coming in as well. I've got them all kind of lined up. I've got a giant worm here that I'm using as a tower and even this cool set of insects that I believe are in the spring sale along with some of these proto factor characters and the uh, infinity PBR ones. Now on top of the characters, I also use things like beautify, which just makes it look nice. It's a connect asset that you've probably seen before. Click a couple buttons and it makes it look quite a bit better than I can make it look because I am far from a technical artist or a good art developer or even good designer. Code I can do, the art side I definitely need tools and help with. I did the same thing for particle effects, for my towers, and pretty much everything else. Oh, there we go. Hornet sting at that tower. I can make a tower. Let's go find that giant tower. Where are you, tower? I'm terrible, terrible at finding things. And then make them do a cannonball at each other. Bam. I'm going to make this animate so that it points if I end up sticking with that tower. Nice thing about the asset store option is that if I decide I don't want this tower, I just switch it out to something else. And again, it's going to take me about three minutes because this doesn't even have animation on it. Now, if you've got ideas for characters or abilities or things I can put in, please let me know. Put them down in the description or the comments below. If they're on the uh, flash sales right now from the spring sale that is going on, um, let me know right away so that I can check it out. You know, go grab it while it's on sale. There's a flash sale going on with, I think everything is 70% off on the spring sale and then it goes down to 50% off after a day or so. So go check that out. I'll put links for that down in the description as well as I'll I'll link all of the assets that I'm using in the project as well. Just thanks to those um, developers, those asset publishers who've made really cool stuff. I really like this mimic. My, my son asked if it was uh, stolen from Dark and Darker because apparently they use the same mimic. Anyway, really cool set. Um, and this has just been made it super simple for me to make the game. And I'm really leaning towards kind of a D&D &D style feel. Or maybe I'll go with this uh, sci-fi. Or I might just go kind of up in the air where everybody just submits all kinds of different stuff. Oh, I haven't put an animation on that guy yet. And then you can kind of mix and match and go kind of wild. Now, if you've got thoughts on environments as well, please please let me know. I am terrible at that. My environment building is horrible. And um, I'm not really sure if I should go with dungeons, open world, uh, floating platforms in outer space, or whatever. In fact, I've even got uh, somewhere in here, there's a spaceship character might have gone off screen because I've just added too many things here it's for my test UI to see it. But anyway, if you got ideas, please let me know. If you have questions about how it was put together, how the code all works, feel free to drop a comment. I'll try to answer as many of them as possible. And I'm going to do lots of follow-up videos. And if you submit ideas for characters and abilities, uh, I will try to get them in. Well, I'll get as many of them as possible in. And then you'll see them all in-game and then be able to go grab it on Steam. It's actually up on Steam right now, just not publicly available. So you've got to get a code from me to get it. All my students already have access. And I'm to start to slowly give out codes as uh, time goes by and uh, the thing gets a, a little bit closer to ready to, ready for everybody to play. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Um, if you got questions or ideas, please drop them down below. Again, programming is easy. Design is hard. So looking for those really good design ideas. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.
If you want to learn how to build multiplayer games and you're not sure how to start or how to get it done, go to Game.Courses and check out the Multiplayer Mastery course. It's my latest course on advanced game development where you'll learn how to build both a peer-to-peer racing game and a Diablo-style RPG with inventory, abilities, and spells, and a whole lot more. And if you're a new game developer or just getting into the industry, check out the Game Programmer course. It'll take you from zero experience to the point where you can build and deploy a fun local multiplayer game. You can enroll in both of them at game.courses today. Also, don't forget to check out the asset developers that I featured in this video. A lot of them make really great stuff and it makes my development process quite a bit faster. Some of them are in the flash sale. In fact, I think almost all of them have something in the flash sale. So go check that out. I'll link their assets that are on sale as well as the ones that I'm using right down below for you.